in some ways, the freedom schools began much earlier than 1964 and the Summer Project. Education has always been a part of civil rights or the Southern freedom struggle. I mean, that's why they made the education of slaves illegal in the United States. There's always been this connection between education and freedom. As Frederick Douglass put it again in his autobiography in the late 19th century, education unfits a child to be a slave. So when I come to Mississippi in 1962, one of the things that surprised me driving through the Delta, I, see, I would see these new brick buildings that were schools for black students. But if you went into the schools, you'd see libraries didn't have very many books, or if they had laboratories, they weren't test tubes and microscopes. So you could see right away that they were kind of shells to give the impression of separate but equal. And up in the Delta, which is cotton country, you know, they would shut down the schools when it came time to pick the cotton. And they would shut down the schools when it came time to plant the cotton. So you could see that the vision of the state with respect to education for black people is that all they needed was a sharecropper education. All that was expected of them in life was to be sharecroppers. So, so you didn't have to give them much education. And, and if you research the numbers, in, in books and stuff. How much is spent on black students in this county and how much is spent for white students. You'd be struck by just how big the discrepancy in expenditures is. So we were aware of all of that, but we didn't have a way to tackle it. What the Summer Project enabled us to do was to begin to think about that. As a practical matter, if you've got a whole lot of inexperienced students coming to Mississippi, you want to figure out a way you could use them in the safest manner possible. The thing about freedom schools were all done within the black community, so there's a degree of safety that is not there if they're driving somebody to the county courthouse to register to vote. So uh, as a practical matter, you know, having the students in these communities and using them as teachers helped keep them safe and also won us points in the community because education has always been a big thing in the black community. There was a, clearly a consensus in the community that education, however you could get it, was a good thing. So uh, a history major from Brown or Howard University or, or Stanford or UC Berkeley had a lot to offer kids who were being so abysmally undereducated. Most of the people, if they had any schooling at all, didn't much get up to the third grade. So we had, we had grown-ups <laughs> uh, coming to these schools just you know, to participate, to, to listen to a history lesson. We knew you're not going to solve in a summer all of the things public schools haven't given, them, haven't given them in terms of learning math or history. You're just not going to do it in that small time frame. What you could do in the summer, which we use the freedom schools to do, is give the students a view that there's a wider world out here. This world that they say you have to live in, what you're expected to pick cotton or be a maid in, in some home or some other form of menial. It's not the only thing out here. 